We're going to carry out an insulation resistance test on ex an existing lighting circuit. Guidance Note 3 makes it quite clear that it's not necessary really to carry out any kind of testing during a, a periodic inspection. It's just supplementary to the inspection and should really only be carried out when the person who's doing the inspection feels it's necessary. This is a, an industrial unit and some of the lights are very, very high, um, very difficult to access. So there are certain methods that we can use just to ensure that the, the uh, installation is deteriorating. But of course what we need is our documentation, past test results, uh, evidence of any maintenance. That's very, very important because without those documents, a periodic inspection would become more detailed and more testing would be required. What I need to do really is, first of all, use the correct type of equipment. And that would be an insulation resistance test instrument with leads to GS38. I need to prove it was working correctly. I'm just going to turn it on. Test it with the leads together and I'm getting zero. So that tells me the leads are okay. Test it with the leads apart. I've got an open circuit. That's absolutely fine. So the machine's okay. This installation here, I've already prepared the board. I've isolated everything. So all the safe working procedures have been carried out. One thing you must remember though, when carrying out a, a periodic inspection or a test on a periodic inspection is that some of the stuff you're gonna be working on is live. It's not always possible to isolate the whole of the installation. So great care must be taken, particularly where you can only isolate one circuit at a time, because of course the rest of the distribution board and the rest of the installation will, will remain live. I've got the instrument set at 250 volts. I'm just gonna test between the live conductors first. Push the button. And I've got a very poor reading there. That's a very low resistance reading. That could be one of two things, really. It could be that something's already in the circuit, which is going to stop me doing this sort of test. Or it could be that the lights have been left switched on. So what I need to do now is just switch the lights the other way and see what happens. I've just switched off the lights. Um, in other words, I'll flick the switch the other way just to see if that's what the problem was. Um, and I'll retest it now and see what the result is. Again, at 250 volts to start with, just in case. Right, so I'm over a thousand mega ohms now. That, that's the sort of resistance I'm looking for. This is over range, means it's a very good circuit. Of course, if I was really doing this job as a, as a job, I would have switched the lights off before I carried out this test. It's purely just a demonstration to show you what the problems could be. So before you do this sort of test, make sure that you turn the lights off before you proceed and then you know you've got no problems. Now I'm happy that there's nothing connected to this circuit um, which is gonna cause any problems. I can now carry out the test at 500 volts. So I'll just turn the instrument to 500, push the button. And again, I'm getting a resistance reading of greater than a thousand mega ohms. Of course, different instruments have different ranges. This one you put down as greater than a thousand. Some instruments go to 200. It doesn't matter, you just put down the reading that you get. So this would be a good circuit. But of course, now I've done between line and neutral, or live conductors, I need to do between live conductors and earth. If, however, I'd found that there was something on this circuit which was, was going to cause me a problem, such as a PIR or an emergency lighting, what I would do is then not do the test between live and neutral at 500 volts. I would join the live conductors together and just test live conductors to earth. So wherever you think there's likely to be a problem, never test between live conductors, just test between live conductors and earth. It is a periodic inspection. You're not really um, intended to strip the whole installation apart. It's just a check to make sure that it's as safe as you can, as you can possibly be. Now I'm happy that the uh, 
test between live conductors is satisfactory. I'm going to carry on and do a test now between live conductors joined to earth. First of all, I need to just join the two live conductors together. Make sure they're nice and secure within the crocodile clip. Carefully connect my other lead to the earthing conductor. Switch it to 500 volts. Push the button. And again, you can see I've got a reading of greater than 1,000 megams. So this circuit is, is satisfactory. But I must impress on you that these sort of tests should only be carried out by people who know what they're doing because you can see this is a live board and it can be very, very dangerous.